Hi there and welcome back. Today we're going to be making this clear project bag. Now if you have a Cricut Maker, I've got a design space file for you linked in the description below this video and you can cut it out with the Cricut Maker. If you don't have a Maker, no worries. We can cut this out by hand. It's super simple and we only need a few supplies. So let's get started. You're going to need two pieces of plastic cut to six by 14, any color you wish, four pieces of fabric cut to eight and a half by 14, you're going to need two pieces of fabric cut to four by 12 inches. You're going to need two pieces of cording, one yard each. You're going to need some double-sided sewing tape, scissors, our rotary cutter, some clips or pens, thread, and a fabric pen. The first thing that I wanted to show you is how to get the wrinkles out of the PVC plastic that we've been working on the last few projects. If you just iron your ironing surface as I did here and then just place the plastic on that freshly ironed surface, it just th flattens it right out. So if it comes on a roll or anything and you, it's curling up on you and you're trying to cut it, this is really, really helpful. Also, when you turn the bag right side out, it often gets wrinkled. So this is a quick way to get those wrinkles out without doing any damage. You obviously don't want to touch the iron to the PVC plastic or vinyl. It will melt, but simply warming up the ironing board and placing it on there will get you ready to go. So let's set our vinyl aside. And the first thing we're going to do is start with our larger pieces of fabric. These are our eight and a half by 14 inch pieces of fabric. And these are all going to be prepared the same way. You're going to open it up. You're going to fold in the long edges one quarter of an inch and press just as I've done here. And then you're going to fold it in half so that those edges meet up and press it again. And you're going to do that to all four pieces of eight and a half by 14 inch fabrics. So all of these have been prepared the same way. Next, you're going to take the four by 12 pieces of fabric and you're going to fold the short ends in and stitch down the short ends. And then you're going to do the same thing, fold the long ends in one quarter inch, press, and then fold it in half and press again. And you're going to do that to both of your four by 12 inch pieces of fabric. So again, you're gonna fold in the sides and stitch those down and then fold the long edges just like this going to do that to both pieces and then fold it in half and press. So once you have all of those done, meet me back here and we'll start assembly. Okay, so we're going to start with one of our pieces of vinyl or clear PVC, whatever you want to call it. You're going to open up one of your eight and a half by 14 inch pieces and you're going to use a little bit of this double-sided tape. Now this is the same tape that I use when I install zippers. I'll have it linked in the description below the video. You, this is not absolutely necessary. You don't have to use this, but it makes it a whole lot easier to keep the vinyl in place when you're trying to sew. It's a double-sided tape. You just simply put it down and then peel off the protective outer um, coating. And then that leaves a sticky side so we're just placing our vinyl on that. I'm using the grid on my mat to make sure that I get that on there straight. And once I have that vinyl in place, I'm just going to use another piece of sticky tape and press that down and then remove the lining. And then I'm going to fold this piece up. Now again, you don't have to use this tape. You can pin it because you're going to be stitching over this so you won't see the holes but I think this is a lot easier to keep this into place. It just makes it just a lot easier. I don't have another word for it. So we're going to do the same thing to the top of our bag or the bottom, it doesn't really matter at this point, but we're going to install the top side the exact same way. You're going to put a piece of that tape in, press it down, remove the liner, Again, I'm lining it up on the grid so that I know I get it on straight. And then I'm just applying the vinyl. 
And this doesn't have to be clear vinyl. If you noticed at the beginning, I used some purple vinyl on a bag for um, Evie. So you can make this, make it your own, make it any way you want. And we're going to remove that lining and fold that top piece down. You want to make sure that you don't get that sticky tape. I've got mine a little bit too low that is going to show outside of your window. So if you do, just it'll peel right up. You can just peel it up and then reset it so that it's up in the fabric line. And then fold that top piece down. Now you're going to prepare the second panel exactly the same way. Okay, I'm just finishing up this last panel. And again, I'm just sandwiching the vinyl in between two layers of the tape, folding it down, and making sure that that is stuck into place. Now, if everything's not lined up exactly, that's okay. When you're cutting this vinyl, sometimes things shift and it doesn't cut quite straight or whatever the problem may be, but I left room in the uh, dimensions that we can trim this down and you can see here my fabric on one end is a little bit longer than it should be so what I'm going to do is straighten up one panel just by lining it up on the grid and making sure that I have a nice flush edge and then I'm going to turn it around and straighten up the opposite side And again, we have plenty of room, so if yours is off a little bit more than mine is, or less, that's neither, either way, it's going to work out just fine. So now we're just going to trim one side of the second panel, and then we're going to lay it on top of the other one just to make sure that we have two panels exactly the same size. So go ahead and trim one side. And then I'm going to lay both of my panels on top of each other. And I'm just going to trim this side enough that I can make sure that I have two panels exactly the same size. I'm gonna make sure everything's even. you're working with the vinyl, things tend to slip and slide a little bit. So you gotta really take your time and make sure that you're lined up. And now I'm just trimming off so that I have two panels that are exactly the same size. Perfect. Now you need to decide which you want to be the top pattern and which you want to be the bottom. I think I'm gonna do the flowers on the top and the stripes on the bottom. So you're going to take your other pieces with the fold side facing the top of the bag and you're going to center those on the top panel. Again, the fold is facing down, the open ends are facing up. And you're just going to clip that into place centered. You could obviously fold this in half, fold your strip in half and line those up. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, that's fine with me. Now I'm just using the first one as a template and I'm going to line my second one this way. Again, the open ends are facing the top of the bag and the fold is facing down. So it's like this. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take both of the panels over to our sewing machine. We're going to stitch across here, stitch across here, and stitch the strip into place. So three places on both seams. One, two, three on both panels. So meet me back here. All right, I've got everything stitched into place. You can see my panels there. Everything else is stitched. So the side with those strips on it is going to be the outside of the bag. We're gonna put those two sides facing each other and stack these on top of each other. So the two orange strips in my case are facing each other. Now you wanna make sure when you stack these on top, the first thing you do is line up where these fabrics meet because this will show on the outside of the bag if they aren't lined up. So that's the first thing that I clip into place. 
That's why it's important to use the same seam allowance on all of your throughout the project so that everything will line up. And if your bottom's off a little bit, that's fine. It's not really going to show, but you need to have that top and those seams lined up. So once you have that clipped, this is the top. We left that open. You're going to take it over the sewing machine and stitch down, across, and back up, making sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end of your stitches. Leave the top open. So down and up. So I've got mine all sewn into place and one thing I did do was go on the fabric portions and add a zigzag stitch on the edges just to keep those raw edges from fraying. So I zigzagged on all four of the fabric corners. I don't know if you can see it here, but that'll just keep it from fraying and keep it neat on the inside. All right, now it's time to box our corners. So what we're going to do, I have a one inch template here. If you don't have a one inch template, you can simply use a ruler and mark a one inch square or cut a one inch square out of paper or cardstock. But I'm going to line the top or the side of the template and the bottom with my stitch lines, not the edge of the fabric. I'm lining it up with the stitch lines and I'm just making a box just like this. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side, again using my stitch lines. That's going to make sure that your corners are the same on all four sides. So I'm not lining up with the edge of the fabric, I'm lining it up with the stitch line. So measure up one inch and over one inch and make a box and then we're going to cut that box out make sure you use scissors for this step you can do it with a rotary cutter but it's really easy to overshoot it and that will ruin your corner okay so now we're going to open up that corner you can just reach inside it's probably easiest and you're going to line up that side seam with the bottom seam, just like this. And then you're going to push one seam to the left, one seam to the right. Make sure those bottom seams are lined up and push one each way and then clip that into place. And again, I'm not a big clipper, but when I'm working with the vinyl, I do clip quite a bit just because it wants to fight with you a little bit and it makes things a little bit stiffer so I'm going to put three clips on this little tiny corner. So it should look something like this and that's just going to keep everything into place. Now we're going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. You want to make sure that bottom seam is going the same way as it did on the other sides. So again, I'm lining up the top and the side seam together and then pushing that seam on the bottom to the left and the side seam to the right and clipping that into place. And then you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and you're going to use a zigzag stitch and close those corners. Using a zigzag stitch will keep the raw edges from fraying. So again, just zigzag across there using the same seam allowance on both corners. And when you're all done, it should look something like this. I don't know if you can see that zigzag here, but it makes a really nice clean edge. So now we're going to trim up all of our threads. If you have any loose threads, make sure you clean it up and keep this tidy. Since it's a clear bag, everything's going to show through. So I'm just tidying it up and then you're going to turn it right side out. If this is too hard for you, um, it really shouldn't be since we've got the fabric with it as well, but you can always warm this up, again, using the ironing board or the blow dryer just to warm that vinyl up, and that will make it easier for you to turn. But again, you can see now it's got a little bit of a wrinkle to the clear vinyl, so I'm just going to bring in my ironing surface again, heat up the surface, just lay the bag on there and instantly those wrinkles just disappear. You can see it adds a little, little bit of steam. And just that easy, it becomes a nice and smooth and gives me a nice finish. 
And again, make sure you do not touch the iron to the plastic. It will instantly melt. All right, so it's looking like this. We're going to lift up those channels that we made for our thread, our uh, cord to go through. I'm using a bodkin. You can use a safety pin, whatever you like to use. I like to use this bodkin. It just makes it easy. I will link it in the uh, description below the video. But whatever you want to use is just fine. So you're just going to slide it through one side of the channel all the way through and out and then back through the opposite side. You can do this. I'm sure you are familiar with this procedure. But once you get it through on the other side, make it even so it's laying flat. And then I like to just knot these two together. And I like the ends to fray, but if you don't, you might want to do a little knot at the end of each of your ropes. You might want to leave a little extra length if you want to do that. But I kind of, I like them to fray. I kind of encourage it to fray. And then you're going to do the same thing with your other rope or ribbon or whatever you're using to, for your drawstrings. Only you're going to start it from the opposite side. So I'm going to thread it through this side. I like to go below the other rope. I find it easier to push that rope up that's already in there and then I go below it. So I'm just working it around and back through the other side. Again, going below the rope that was already in there. And then you're just going to pull it out and knot it just like you did the other one and we are all finished. So just a simple knot. And that's it. Your bag's ready to be filled with your projects or the kids toys or whatever they need or you need. And isn't that awesome? I think it's really cool that you can see what's in it and it adds a really added flair to all of these project bags that I've been seeing. And you can see there's a great variety that you can do with these bags. Here's one using the purple PVC. Here is another one that I use for yarn. And I just think the possibilities are endless. It's a lot of fun. I really love how these turned out. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell notification so that you're notified every time there is a new video. I hope you're enjoying this series of clear vinyl bags. I know I am. And until next time, never stop making. See you guys. Bye-bye.